Hey guys, how are you? Let's see if anybody hops on while I get this situated. All right, so this is starting the new year with intention. This is something that I am really excited about. Um, I hate New Year's resolutions. I don't know that I've ever actually set one. I've hated them forever um, for a variety of reasons that we will get into. But this year I have um, this year I have created a really amazing mindset practice in my own life and setting intentions daily and really kind of checking myself. And it has helped me in figuring out what I want and who I want to be and how I want to show up every day. Um, so this time of year, when everywhere you look, all you are seeing is New Year's resolutions, I thought that setting a New Year's intention and looking at how to set SMART goals would be way more helpful. Way, way, way more helpful. Um, all right. So we'll just give it a minute. We'll see if anybody else jumps on before we get started. If you are here live with me, say hello so I know you're here. Sometimes my phone tells me when you show up, sometimes it doesn't. So I never really know who's watching. Um, and there is a little bit of a delay. So if you comment, I think it takes like 15 seconds or something before I see it. Hey, Amber. All right, beautiful. And Lindsay, I know you're there. My phone did tell me that you came on. Hey, hi. Okay. Um, so I know there might be a few other people joining us, but we'll get started anyways, and they can just hop on. So um, I hope that you guys have some sort of a journal or a notebook or a scrap piece of paper, something that you can write on and a pen, um, because what we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be taking you a bit of a a sequence, um, like a question sequence, we're going to break down kind of your intentions, how you want to show up and look at goals. Um, so of course you can do this in your head, but it's way more useful if you actually have something on paper um, or a laptop or something where you can type. That's cool too. If you just close me down and, and open up another window, a Google Doc or something, that'll work. Okay, so intentions. Um, like I was saying before, resolutions, I'm not a fan of them. I never have been. In my mind, resolutions are all about not doing something, right? They're about, I don't want to do this anymore, or it's, I need to change all of these things about myself. And there's a, a lot of, in my experience, there's a lot of negative energy and a lot of undoing kind of energy in resolutions, whereas an intention is stepping forward. It is a positive thing that you are stepping into and creating. So in my experience, there's just a really big difference in your energy and how you show up, uh, which is where the really good stuff is. That's the juicy stuff is the energy behind how you do things. So this year for myself in 2018, I didn't have a word. I had a little phrase um, and my mantra for 2018 is I am open. And that meant for me, I am open to new experiences, new people, new opportunities, new places, new everything. I am open. I did not want to be closing myself off to things. Um, and my word, I've chosen one word for 2019, and that is freedom. And I'll tell you a bit more about that at the end. All right. So first things first, how we're going to start is I want you to grab your paper and you are going to brainstorm how you would like to show up this year. Most people have given this some thought. Like I said, there's a lot of talk this time of year. Um, so how would you like to show up? Get like five to 10 ideas. These are like qualities you would like to bring. So this could be, you know, I want to be calm or I want to be balanced or I want to be successful or I want to, you know, like these are qualities that you kind of want to bring into your life. You want to invite in. Um, so just take a moment and brainstorm. Um, now, when I did this brainstorm, I found this really hard. I ended up getting seven and it was a stretch for me to get seven. So do your best. If you only get two or three, that's cool. If you get 20, that's cool as well. So take a moment and really just brainstorm all of the words, all of the qualities, how you kind of think you would like to show up in 2019. Anything, big or small, whatever comes to mind, get it down. 
And then once you have finished that, take a look at that list and circle your top two, maybe three. Usually there is something that jumps off the page at you. Usually there's something, and you might not understand why, it might be like an emotional reaction. Usually there is something that you go, ooh, that one, that one, that one feels good. Um, so circle your top two to three, whatever feels the best. And then looking at these top, again, these top two to three, what is important about them? So I would just write down that word and jot down just bullet points, right? It doesn't have to look nice or anything. What is important about that? So say you've written calm as your word. What's important about being calm? How, you know, is it going to impact how you work as a parent um, in your relationships, in your friendships? Um, how are you going to show up at work differently or in your business differently? Um, what is important about that word? or about that quality, why did it come out to you? Why did it jump off the page at you? And then once you've got that, if I'm going too fast, guys, please let me know as well. It's really hard for me to know how fast to go. Um, so if you need more time, please just say pause and I will pause. I get that this is a live thing. You can't pause me if you're here live. <laughs> um, so once you've kind of gone through and you figured out what's important about those words, what, sorry, is there any part of you that objects to those things? Now you might be thinking like, no, of course not, because I'm going to be you know, a better mother or father. I'm going to be a better employee. I'm going to feel calmer. I'm going to do this. But just because it's not something obvious doesn't mean it won't happen. Okay. So really ask that question, is there any part of you, even a small part, that objects to you showing up that way? And if nothing comes up, that's fine. But it's important that we at least ask the question and feel into that and see what comes up. And then if you did have any objections come up, any problems come up, what might you have to let go of? What might you have to release in order for that not to be a problem for you. So if, for example, you had an objection like, I don't know if I can do it. Like, it's just going to be too much. You know, like, like that feeling of overwhelm. I don't know if I can do it. Um, then maybe you have to let go of being the person who can do everything. Maybe your energy, maybe that showing up in a sense of calm is more important than having a perfectly clean house or being perfectly manicured all the time or something like that, right? So what might you have to let go of? And it could be a physical thing, could be an action, could be a feeling, but what might you have to let go of in order to have that? It's really important to get super, super, super aware. And if you did let go of that thing, again, that, you know, whatever it is, cleaning the house, appearing in a certain way, if you did let go of that, if you were to release that, what good thing might happen? What are you opening yourself up to by releasing it? And what quality might that bring out in you that you would applaud later. So again, if it's calm and I'm, I'm releasing the need to have a perfectly clean house all the time so that I can welcome in a sense of calm. Well, you know, what good thing might happen? I'd feel better. I would just feel a lot better. I'd feel a lot more balanced. Um, and I would show up and I would be a better mother. What quality might that bring out in you that you'd applaud later? You would have more patience for your children. Maybe something like that. All right. So we're looking at, we're looking at the whole thing. And then given that, given all of this, what decision would you like to make about how you're showing up for yourself in 2019? Is there a word from earlier? You know, we picked those two or three words. Is there a word that is just jumping out at you 
that feels right. Like I, it has to be that word. Or if you prefer, you can create a sentence in how you're showing up. Um, and this could be, you know, like my 2018, my mantra of I am open. It might be something like that. I am calm or I am successful or I am worthy. So it might be a, a sentence, a little phrase, or it might just be a word. Freedom, calm, happy, right? Um, so whatever feels good, you know, we want to make sure that we get something. If you guys have questions, please let me know. Um, pop them down below. If something isn't clear, if something isn't making sense, um, this sequence is something that I have used many, many times um, in my one-on-one -on -one coaching, but of course it is different talking to one person versus talking to a video where I can't really see your guys' reactions. So if you do have questions or anything, please let me know, okay? Um, so what decision would you like to make about how you're showing up in 2019? It's one of those words jumping off the page. Or maybe none of them are, and maybe you want to come up with a new one. Maybe you had happy and calm and balanced, and that all comes up to serenity or something like that, right? Maybe you need to come up with a new one that encompasses all of those kind of top feelings that you really want to feel into. And I really am curious, how does it feel to find that direction and to declare it? Like, how does it feel to have that word? Is there... You know, if you, if you want to share, let me know. Is it surprising what came up? Um, do you feel just, do you feel good about it? Were you kind of expecting it? Did you have a fairly good idea coming in here? Um, it's always really interesting for me to know what's coming up for you guys. So how does it feel to find that direction and declare it? And this also counts for anybody who's watching the replay, all right? Even if you're not here live with us, if you're watching the replay, join in comment anyway. You're more than welcome. So how does it feel to find that direction and declare it? And then it's really important. What physical things might I see you doing that let me know that you're showing up in this way? So what specific actions are you taking to get yourself closer to this intention? Again, I'm going to come back to my example of using the word calm. What specific actions are you taking to embody this word? Now that could be something like, I'm going to prioritize my self-care for one hour every Saturday. Or I am going to meditate for five minutes every day before the rest of the household wakes up. Or I am going to commit to seeing a therapist each week to deal with my stuff. You know, we all have stuff. Maybe it's I'm going to commit to talking to a professional each week to help me create that sense of inner calm. All right. So I want you to list like five to ten physical things, physical actions that you are going to take to get yourself closer to this word or to this phrase, to your, your intention of how you want to be in 2019. And once you have those, I want you to be really clear on these, by the way, not just like I'm going to try to relax more. That's not an action. That's just like a general hope. <laughs> How are you going to relax more, right? I'm going to get a massage once a month. That is a specific thing. I'm going to meditate every day. That is a specific thing. Um, and then how can we make this, again, this one word or this one phrase, this thing you've come up with, how can we make this something you see daily? I love this. I, call, I like to call this an anchor and it is a visual representation of this goal that you've set. And these can make a massive difference, okay? So this is something like making this word or this phrase your phone screensaver or your laptop screensaver. It could be writing it on a post-it and putting it on your bathroom mirror so you see it every single day. It can be writing it on your fridge, like those little whiteboards on your fridge, writing it on there so you see it every day. And again, if it's one word, if it's calm, just write, write calm everywhere. But where can you, where can you commit to making this visible in your life? 
pick something and I'm going to challenge you to make it happen in the next 24 hours. And if this is something big, like if you want to, I don't know, if you want to do like a needle point giant thing and put it on your wall, it's going to take longer. But if you want to make it your phone screensaver, 24 hours. If you want to put it on your bathroom mirror, well, you better do that right away as soon as you get off here because there's no excuse for not doing that. But pick at least one way that you can make this visible in your life and commit to making that happen. Now, I want you to just, we're just going to take a moment and kind of integrate this into ourselves, to who we are. And I want you to Hey, Angela, thanks for coming. I want you to just take this word or this phrase into your mind. If it's safe, if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. If not, that's fine. Put your hands over your heart and repeat that word or that phrase to yourself 10 times. This might be out loud if you're sitting in a room where nobody's around or it might just be in your head. Take slow, deep breaths and really feel it. Really integrate it into who you are. The energy behind that word. The energy is the powerful bit. Okay? So just take a moment. Repeat that word or that phrase to yourself ten times. Really breathe into it. And when you're ready, you can... Come on back. And I just want to tell you, so I told you at the beginning, my word for 2019 is freedom. And I love this word. I wasn't sure about it for a while, but I did a very similar exercise to this and it kind of helped me solidify that it is the right word for me. Um, And for me, this means freedom in life in general. It means freedom in finances. Um, like specifically have less than $5,000 of debt by the end of 2019. It means being location independent. I've always wanted that. Um, It doesn't mean that I'm constantly traveling. It just means I have full choice to be wherever I want to be. Have the freedom to create the business of my dreams. I'm very much on the way. That's why I'm here. But there's constantly new things coming up and new amazing ideas. And it's feeling free to do that. It's freedom of my own self-doubt, my own limiting beliefs. Right, So my word freedom really means a lot of different things or a lot of really beautiful things that are super, super exciting. So once you have your intention, your word, your phrase, the energy in which you want to show up in 2019, I just want to talk about setting goals with that, using that. Because again, you might be saying, okay, cool, I have my word, but what does that mean? What do I do with it? How does this work? So I want to talk about how to set some smart goals um, so that way you can now take this intention and really integrate it into creating change in your life. Okay, so we're going to take this one step further. So we're going to set SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T, and this is an acronym. I love, I did not make this up. Actually, I have no idea who did. It's been around forever. Um... And there's many different variations to it, but they can really just help provide a very good foundation for setting goals. And um, so it, I'll tell you kind of what each letter means, um, and then we can, we'll go from there. So S is something like specific or significant. M, measurable, meaning, meaningful, motivational. Um, a, agreed upon. All parts of you need to agree on this goal. If a part of you is like, no, hell no, we're not doing that, then the goal doesn't count. All parts of you need to be in agreement with this goal. Um, And it also needs to be attainable um, and action-oriented. R is realistic. um, Realistic, relevant, reasonable. And then T is time-based and tangible and trackable. So what does this mean? I know this is just a whole lot of words. What does this mean? Basically, if we go through it kind of in order, S, if we use S as specific, well-defined, clear to anyone. Okay, so it's not just, you know, say, I don't know, what's your goal? Anybody have a goal we want to do? If you have a goal, 
throw it out there and we can totally work on it. Otherwise, I will just make something up on the spot, which is fine as well. We can totally do that. No? No goals? No goals. That's cool. Okay. So let's just take... Let's use weight loss only because I know that it is a goal of a lot of people and it's really easy to do this in a super negative way. And here, of course, ooh, financial and physical stability. All right, Linz, we're using yours. Awesome. Financial stability. Let's use that one. Again, just like weight loss, we could pretty much all use some financial stability. Am I right? Yeah? Give me a thumbs up if you could use financial stability in your life. I'm giving you one. I need some more. I think we all could. Um, okay, so let's use financial stability. So number one, specific. What does financial stability mean? That, that means a different thing to everybody in the planet. To some that's like, I want to make a thousand bucks a week and I'm going to feel stable. To some that means I need to make a million dollars in a year and then I'll feel stable, right? So get really well defined. What is financial stability? What does that mean to you? And then next M is measurable. So how do you know? How do you know if you've got it? You know, know if the goal is attainable and how far away you are from completion and how do you know when you've achieved it? So again, if you want financial stability, we'll just keep using Lindsay's example because I think that's awesome. If your goal is financial stability and, okay, so what does that mean to you? Say that means 5, 000, you want to make $5,000 each month, just for example. I'm just pulling that number out of nowhere, but it feels right. You want to make $5,000 a month and that is how you will know that you are financially stable. Measurable. Will you know when you've made $5,000? Yes, because that is very trackable, right? You know exactly when you've hit $5,000. You can look at the numbers. You know when you've got there. Agreed upon. Is there any part of you that's going, nope, that's not right. Nope, we need more. Nope, that's not going to happen. So check in with yourself on the inside. We need to make sure that all parts of you are in agreement. And if not, then we need to start looking into that a little bit more. But just check in. Just kind of feel around inside yourself. See if there's any parts of you that are going like, ma, this could never happen. Or that's not enough. That, that still doesn't feel secure to me. In which case, maybe we need to go back and look at that number or we need to go back and look at what that stability means. Um, by the way, I'm using all of this as an example. When we're done here, I really wanna encourage you to go back and go through all these steps for yourself. Um, so if you want to write down the acronym, the S-M-A-R-T acronym, um, that might be really helpful when you go back through and do this with all of your goals. Um, so specific, measurable, agreed upon. R is realistic. So if you are currently making $500 a month and you say, I want to make $20,000 a month. No, we'll stick with the same number. $5,000 a month. Is that realistic? Well, I personally, I think it is. That's a very realistic number. Um, but is it realistic in that, we'll get to the next one, T is time-based. So do I want to make $5,000 every single month of 2019? And, you know, so then that would make, be a total of, what, that's $60,000. Is that realistic for you? Or... Is it not realistic to make $5,000 in January, which is coming up in just a few days, if you made $0 in December and if you don't have a job or you don't have a business? Like, is that realistic? We don't want to set goals that are way so far outside of reality that we are setting ourselves up for failure. Um, but you also, you know, you also need to make sure that it could happen. Right? Like you, know, you have to set yourself up for success, but still give yourself a little bit of stretch because stretch is how we grow um, and that's how we succeed. So time-based, you have to have enough time to succeed at your goal, but also not too much time. And this is an important one. 
And for the life of me, I can't. I was trying to find it before and I couldn't find it. But I've heard this before, which is basically we underestimate what we can do. What is it? We underestimate what we can do in a year, but we overestimate what we can do in a month. Um, yeah, Angela, so important that you can get behind them. It's totally. If you can't get behind them, you won't reach them. You will not. Um, but yeah, time-based. So you, we generally, as people, most of us, underestimate what we can do in a year. A year is a long time. You can do a hell of a lot if you really put your mind to it. But we overestimate what we can do in a month and then we get overwhelmed. So get very specific on this timing. I want to make $5,000 a month starting in March. Say and excuse me and leading up to that in february i want to make three thousand and in january i want to make two thousand and then you're creating a system right so you need to get specific if you're just like i want to make five grand a month for the entire year and that's it you're, you you might not get there you might but you might not only you know your situation right so you really need to make sure that you're setting yourself up for that so with all of this in mind if you haven't done it already, I want to invite you to write down a couple of goals that you have for 2019. Two, two or three. You can have more if you like. I really want to recommend two or three. Don't worry about getting specific with this, all the smart stuff right now. If you haven't done it already, go back after and take some time and do it and really feel your way through it. But what we really want to do, what I want to ask you right now is do these match up with, how you're, with your intention for the year? That's an important thing and if not how can they be altered so for example mine is freedom all right mine is freedom but my goal is to eat healthier how will eating healthier create more freedom in my life how can I bridge the gap between them get really clear on that before you take the next step all right so you know, if your word is calm and you want financial freedom, how will financial freedom bring you calmness? And how will being calm help you achieve financial freedom? How do they work together? I can pretty much guarantee you everything will work together. I think there's very few things that won't. But get really clear on that. Find the ties. Find how they relate with each other before you get really, really specific with things. So once you figure that out, then you can go through, right? And again, I'll tell you the acronyms again. So it's S-M-A-R-T, that's your goal setting. Specific, specific, well-defined, right? Clear to everybody, no questions in there. Measurable, not just I wanna kinda get healthier sometime. You can't measure that, we need to get measurable. Um, agreed upon by all parts of yourself. And if it's not, then you need to go back to number one, specific, and check in on that goal again, okay? So specific, measurable, agreed upon by all parts. Realistic. Um, so often we set very unrealistic goals and we are going to fail. So make sure that your goal is realistic and time-based, right? Set yourself a time goal. In which time will you do this? Um, and remember, don't give yourself too much time because you will actually lose motivation and you probably won't end up actually doing it then. And then again, to solidify this goal, let's make this something that you see daily, just like your intention. Again, can you write it somewhere obvious? Once you have your goal, can you write it somewhere obvious? Maybe share it on social media, share it with a friend. You need to create accountability with any goal. Accountability is, without a doubt, one of the most underutilized kind of tools. Um, being held accountable by somebody is a powerful, powerful, powerful thing. Um, now, this could be almost anybody in your life. Like I said, this could just be social media. It could just be putting it out to the world. And saying, you know, I'm going to I'll hop back on in two months and give you guys an update. And then you've created yourself somewhere to be accountable to. This could be a parent or a sibling or a friend. This could be a professional. It can be almost anybody. Um, but create some sort of accountability system in your life. What is one step you can take, again, in the next 
week or so, sorry, once you've created accountability, then I'm going to ask you, what is one step you could take within the next week? I know we're not in 2019 yet, but honestly, why wait? If you really want something, you can start taking action on it this second. What is one step you can take in the next week to start working towards your goal? Again, if it's financial stability, do we want to look at, do you want to stay at the same job? Do we want to start even just browsing jobs online? Um, Going back to school, changing careers, looking at a secondary source of income. You know, can we, what is one step you can do in the next week to start taking some baby steps towards your goal? And again, just like we did before, once you have your goal, we won't do this now just in case you don't all have your goals because I know this can take some time sometimes. Once you have your goal or goals, you're going to put your hands on your heart again. Close your eyes and repeat the goals to yourself. You're going to say them to yourself. Integrate them into who you are. And just for a moment now, I want you to take a goal, even if you haven't done all the steps yet. You can do that after. Just for a moment now, take a goal that you have. Again, financial stability, health, um, oh no, whatever it is, whatever your goal is. I want to lose 10 pounds. Who knows, right? Whatever your goal is, take that now. And again, if it's safe for you to do so, if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. If not, just soften your gaze. Just stop staring at my face. Stop focusing. Soften your gaze just for a moment. And I want you to step into this future version of you who has already achieved this. Now, say you could be six months through the year. So say we're in June. You're halfway through 2019. I want you to step into that future version of you. Feel your heart beating as this future you. Use her lungs to breathe. Put your fingers in her finger slots and your toes in her toe slots. And take a few big deep breaths with this future version of you's lungs. A few big deep breaths in and out. And I want you to feel into what it's like to be this future you who is already achieving all of these things that you set out to achieve, who is fully embodying this intention of 2019, who is showing up every single day knowing how she's going to show up, knowing who she's going to be every day. And just feel into that. What does this future you know to be true about herself right now? What does this future you know to be true about the world? And what, if anything, does this future you want present day version of you to know? Is there a message? Is there something that she wants you to know? If anything, you might get a message, you might get a word you might just get a reassuring smile. Whatever it is, just take it and really feel it. And when you're ready, I want you to give the future version of you a hug. Give her a smile. Say thank you. And come on back to today. Feel your bum in your chair. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Open your eyes if your eyes are closed. And take a few deep breaths. And welcome back. So before we kind of wrap up, are there any questions? Did anything come up for you? Again, whether you're live or whether you're watching the replay. Did anything come up for you? Again, do you have questions? Do you have comments? Was there anything really surprising in all of that. Um, I'm really curious. I think so often a lot of things come up, but we don't necessarily, we're not always aware of them. 
I think asking right in the moment is a really, can be a really, really powerful tool to bring awareness to all parts of ourselves. And if nothing came up and you have no questions, that's fine as well. Oh, Angela, you're very welcome. I'm happy that you're here. All right, guys, so just to wrap this up, I think we've been going for a while. No idea what time it is. Yeah, oh, we've gone over time. Oops. Um, okay, so to wrap this up, what we want to do, like I said, we want to set an intention of how you want to show up. Who do you want to be for 2019? If you didn't get through that whole question sequence, maybe you didn't show up at the beginning, maybe I was going too fast, watch this once it's posted. Watch the replay and really take your time. There is some juicy, juicy, juicy stuff in here. Take your time and go through and decide how you want to show up. And then if you have goals, if you don't, that's fine. But if you have goals for 2019, how can you make them smart goals? And again, walk through that question sequence. When you're watching me on the replay, you can just pause me. It is way, it's easier. It means you can't ask questions live, but it is much easier in that you can take as much time as you need. Set some goals. And then I want to challenge you to share them. Or even if you're not comfortable sharing the goal or sharing your intention, just share that you've done it, right? Just comment below on this video, you know, done it. I've got my intention. I've got my smart goals set. Um, because the whole point of this is that you can take this, integrate it into your life, and then move forward into 2019 feeling empowered and feeling that you know how you are doing this and feeling that you are taking a step towards a better version of you instead of stomping all over the old you. We don't want to do that. We need to honor all parts of ourselves and still step back. All right. So sorry, still step forward. So that is it. 2019 will be a year of better health. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amber, you're so, so, so welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, all right. So if you have any other questions or anything, pop them down below, any comments. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. I'm always curious how this went, um, how this went for you. And uh, yeah, that's it for us today. I hope that you all have a lovely day or evening or whatever, depending on where you are in the world. I hope that you had a lovely Christmas and a happy new year. And I cannot wait to see you all more in 2019.